Alright, so I was talking too much about Mommy Watson. I wanted it on a separate video. So my journey with water spirits started um it's been a while. I mean when I look back, like I always it's like not it's kinda of funny, but I always like water. If I can't go to sleep, like I'll just fill the bat the bathtub full of water and that's how I'll go to sleep. It's very strange, but I have to be around water at some point. Um, I remember I almost drowned in a public pool when I was 11, so I never was really about swimming in the ocean. But I did go to the ocean, I think it was 2012, when I was in Miami, and I was with a San, uh, Santeria priest. And this was after I received the Lakes and Guerreros and everything, and Guerreros, and they tried to put... Um, I was slated to get Yemaya done, and I thought that was off because I was like, and even when I got my hand to be fired, I said, no, it's not Yemaya. But when I got it brought down the first time, it said Yemaya. So it was very confusing. I got my whole Ocha basket, everything. I got scratched. Um, everything I needed to do to get, well, for me, to... Um, go to Ocha, and then, you know, I got blocked doing that, and I said, you know, I'm just going to get my hand to fly and figure things out, and they said, you know, I'm supposed to do a leg war issue, and then I kind of just stopped from there, so I went to, but my Odu speaks a lot about the water and the ocean, I woke him, and I went to the beach with this Santero from Texas, and he was doing some prayer for Yamaya at the beach, and this was a public beach, everyone else was there. And then, you know, I was looking at the beach, and then I turned my back, and I looked at him as he kept chanting. I know it was all leukemia. I didn't know what the hell he was saying. And, you know, I was like, what are you doing? And the next thing I know, I, I'm not in the water. I'm nowhere near the water. I'm in the sand. But I'm, like, close enough to water that, I guess, if there was, like, a huge tide, it could have touched my feet. So something touched my feet. Like, I felt literally like two hands grab both of my ankles. So I first felt like someone had grabbed my ankles like someone was playing a joke. And next thing I know, I got yanked off my feet. Now, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm over 200 pounds. I'm 6'2". Um, I, like I said, I, I grew up with a pool so I can swim, but I don't really swim in the ocean. But I was getting literally dragged by my ankles backwards. And I'm screaming for help, and I'm stretching out my arms and trying to paddle anything, doggy paddle, nothing. And like, my legs would not move, cause, and something still was dragging me by my feet. And then the Santero priest saw that, and he freaked out, because as I'm screaming for help, and he pulls me out of the water by my hands and my arms. And... Once I finally got out of the water, that's when I could actually lose my, use my legs and, you know, stand up. And he just made a joke like, uh, you're not going anywhere near the water. And I said, ha, ha, ha. I still didn't know what that was. You know, I went years talking to different priests, talking to Santeros, talking to Paleros, talking to Babalaos. And they all bring up Yamaya, Yamaya, Yamaya. It had nothing to do with Yamaya. Um, or even Yamaja. It had nothing to do with um, even Haitian voodoo. Um, yes, La Seren has a fondness for me, but it definitely was not La Seren. So I just went on, went on, went on. You know, I talked to a local priest at the Ebahon Center in Benin City, Nigeria, and they invited me over, and I was supposed to go there to initiate your locum. That didn't happen. I got sick. I ended up going to Brazil. Um, yeah, Arisha, you know, comes up by water. It doesn't really say much. Even in Condom Blade, it doesn't really say much. You know, not until I went to Africa did it actually make sense. And, you know, we talked about Mama Wata and stuff. And then when we are doing a ceremony for Mama Wata, I started to kind of drift into trance for the first time. And I never really went into trance since I was a kid um, until, yeah, I think Africa was like the first time. Even with Haitian voodoo, I never really went in trance. Arisha and Mami Wata were the first ones that kind of made me go to a trance. Because I was in the Ubanda temple for a while, and I just we never could make it happen. So I didn't, I didn't think I could go in a trance, but after Arisha, I did. So, first time in Togo, um, it was more a ceremony. It wasn't an initiation. 
Um, it was just doing um, feeding of mommy water, doing um, what's called agbon, which is like a, a a bundle or parcel of stuff that you give for it to the ocean for mommy water. And I, you know, I learned more about it. Um, do a couple ceremonies, and but it wasn't initiation, initiation, like full full blown. It was only a couple of days. So after you know, I was in Brazil for a while. I, I was like, I gotta do this mommy water stuff. Um, I went to Benin, and I was in a house that was a traditional Vodun house, and also was a Baba Wow. And so a lot of they had a full blown mommy water shrine, and they had. A family mommy wants a shrine, and then Darren and Lisa and everyone. So I got initiated for all those different go doings, got all my incisions and etc. And that was a very, it wasn't heavy. It was more of a traditional where you know I get cut and everything for heavy also go and sock pots and I, you know I showed all my videos with that. Um, so afterwards, I went to, to Nigeria. Across the world, I went to Nigeria. Um, I did what I was supposed to do there, and then Mommy Wata kept coming back up in Ifa again, and, you know, Ifa said I had to go back to Benin, I had to do some stuff, so I had some friends that were Mommy Wata priests, and I realized that, okay, it's very different, so there's traditional Vodun, and then there's Mommy Wata Vodun. So the traditional Vodun houses, you'll have people who have been hereditary Vodun priests, and then they just happen to have something to do with Mami Wata. They may have a Mami Wata shrine, but they're not necessarily Mami Wata priests. And that's how some people get confused, especially, and it happens a lot when you go towards Ghana. Um, a lot of people, because Mami Wata, everyone thinks brings them a lot of money. So um, everyone's claiming to be a Mami Wata priest, and they really aren't. And even some of the people I saw on Instagram, that I was a little sometimes a little arguing with um, about it. They went, you know, they went to Togo and they said they got initiated Mami Wata, and and I said, you know, how? Because if you had the same godfather as I did, or who was the head of the lineage, and you're from the same lineage as me, and I found out that he's not really a Mami Wata priest. And then the person who initiated you is not a Mami Wata priest. How are you a Mami Wata priest? And I start looking at a lot of people, other people who claim to be Mami Wata priests. I'm like, not really Mami Wata priests. Um, because they're not a Mami Wata house. Mami Wata house do nothing but Mami Wata. And they actually, the, in traditional Vodun, the main Vodun is Dan. So it's Dan, Aida Wedo, and then it goes, you know, the other... Um, Vodun's from there. So my main Vodun is Dan. Um, so when you go into the Mami Wata house, their main Vodun is Mami Wata and Dan. So and all the other Vodun's come are under that within the same house. It's very similar to the way they do Haitian Voodoo. Like when you do Haitian Voodoo, you have your different um, nations or different nations and it's very well organized. That's how they do the same with Mami Wata houses. Now, some things the Mami Wata houses have gotten, you know, talking to too many foreigners and too many people from the Caribbean, and then they start making correspondences to shit that doesn't really make sense. Like they say, Javioso is Shango, and then Gu is Gu, Ogun, and then um, Mami Wata is Yemaya, and that's what they don't understand on their part. They're listening to foreigners and their limited understanding of things and then pushing it together and they said, okay, these are the same. They're not. Um, so under their mom, traditional Mami Wata house, it's Mami Wata, and then it comes Javioso, and then Sakpata, and Dan, and Yayi the Wido, and then all the different mommies, you know, Mama Chamba, um, Lisa, Tohoso, Ajakpa, um, Tohoso, I said, um, Hohovi. Um, just thinking on it. Oh, and Dan, there's, there's, and also Mommy Wata House. Everything is kind of, uh, um, not hermaphroditic, but most of the Voodoo's have like a male and a female side. So Dan has a Mommy Dan, and then you have the male one, and you have the Mommy Dan, the Poppy Dan, you have a uh, male and then female. And then with Lisa, you have a Mommy Lisa, and then, a, you know, another Lisa. 
um, Segbo Lisa, um, you have Javioso and you have Evele Kete, and then um, they have lots of, you know, Sakpata, Dada Joji, and then Ananu. Um, they have polar opposites, which are male and female, in a Mami Wata house. And when you're in Mami Wata house, you're kind of initiated to all Throughout a festival, um, you'll see people come going to trance with just not just mommies, but they'll come down with Tohosu or Ajakpa or Ade, which is a hunter, or Javioso or Sakpata comes down a lot. And um, they may not necessarily have the incisions that I do or like in a traditional style. So they may be um, different, a little bit different under the Mami Wata house. So it's just more of the umbrella where um, traditional Vodun is more like um, Orisha where there's separate cults for everything. And then Mami, Wa Mami Wata houses are just like, it's like Mami Wata is the main and it's an um, umbrella. And then you have Mami Sika. Um, you have lots of different mommies that I can go into later. Um, Shiva, um, Durga, and a lot. Of, some of the mommies have mommy, uh, mommy at blow, which is more of a affiliate with a horse, but that comes even, that one comes in a female and a male version. You have Dinsu, which is actually a river spirit um, that's male, and he's more of the head of the mommies there under Dan. Um, so it's a long time in seclusion. It's a long time um, going over dances. It's a long time going over herbs. There's a lot of baths. There's a lot of ceremonies. So total in seclusion just for Vodun, out of the five and a half months I was in West Africa, I spent three and a half weeks doing just traditional Vodun and Mami Watsa. And then when I came back, I stayed another three weeks just for Mami Watsa and Mama Chamba. And then after I came back to Benin the final time, I was still doing some more ceremonies for another two weeks. So it was a, I did it three times when I was in West Africa and then once before in Togo. So, um, Aguato. Um, so I've been through a lot and it's been over years. So, and I, and in between that, me going to Africa, I've been studying, studying, you know, talking to different priests and trying to figure out what are the nuances between the different Mami Wata cults and studying Mami Wata from different countries and looking at the artwork and looking at the way people do different things. And it's very complex and mommies are very territorial. Um, one of the priests, um, got possessed of one mommy and that specific mommy did not like me at all. Another one loved me. The other one was, it's, it depends on, you know, they get kind of ter ter territorial about their priests and priestesses. So you may have one that's very um, off-putting and then you have other ones that might be more friendly. Um, with mommy Watas, they... Um, some mommies are, I mean, most mommies are not human, so they are just the way they are, and you take it or leave it. A lot of people try to force their way into a mommy water cult, and that's not really the way you do it. They choose you, like, similar to, like, how I was, I was literally, my ass was dragged into the ocean, and then I had to figure that shit out. Um, in Africa, that happens more common. I remember when I did... Oh, here's the other thing. During my Mami Watsa ceremony, the first time in Benin, we went to the ocean, we took stuff, we did the Agban, we did um, the parcel to take to the ocean. And then as I was going to the ocean, I completely flipped into trance and started running to the water. And... It was the most disturbing sensation because first you're out of it and then you come back and then you're conscious yet you still have this mental thought, almost like a program running in your head saying, go to the water, go to the water. You hear this voice in your head saying, go to the water. And I literally took three guys to tackle me to make sure I wouldn't go to the water. And I remember one point where I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I was like, you guys can stop tackling me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And as soon as they let me go, I took off running again. 
And they that time they literally had to like push me down to my knees to make and like kind of make me submit so I did not um, go to the water. And that happens a lot, strangely. I mean, they were used to it, but they're not used to it seeing it happen to a foreigner. And it's because of what happened in that water. There's lots of ancestral spirits there. There's lots of spirits of slaves who, you know, they jumped off the boat. So it's very easy, or off the ships, so it's, the slave ships. So it's easy to get swept up in that energy between Mami Wata and also the ancestors and to run into the water and you'll run into the water and probably drown sometimes um, if, if people are not watching you. And even if you watch uh, Mami Wata um, short videos or documentaries, you know, it happens to even some of the priests, like they'll go run into the water and somebody has to watch them to make sure they don't go into the water and don't come back, come back out. Um, it can be a very dangerous thing when you go to the ocean or even to the river. So that's the other thing and reason why I'm very hesitant about people talking about Mami Wata who are not trained, who are not used to that, who are just finding stuff online, who think it's part of hoodoo, and it's not. Um, there is a very real um, danger of drowning um, in trance. Um, other thing, Mami Watas are not Oshun, Mami Wata is not Yemoja. Mami Wata is not Ajay Salunga. Mami Wata is not Alokun. The Yoruba style of Mami Wata, sorry, the Yoruba style of doing Alokun is very similar to Mami Wata. In fact, it's almost, the initiation and even the shrine is almost identical in the materials, the painting. So you do have a lot of people who are in Mami Wata who are also Alokun priests or vice versa. And... It's because they're dealing with similar frequencies of, um, I, from my experience, I'll say that the Yoruba style of Alokun, which is female, is more like Mami Wata. So I, there has been chance, times where we did things for Alokun and I would kind of slip into trance with a Mami. And that does happen a lot to a lot of people. The Benin city style, the Edo style of Alokun is a lot different and it's more masculine. And so that's where you will see more of a difference. It'll still be similar, but it'll be a difference in the way how to make the shrines, different ceremonies. They do draw on the ground more, um, but so do Mami Wata people. And that's the other thing. I don't see people drawing on the ground, and I'm not going to tell them what they draw with because it's very specific, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know what the hell they're doing. And also the signs that we use to call mommies our house and lineage specific and but they still are very similar so they're definitely not veves i put it that way um there's certain requirements there's certain materials there's certain things and i'm seeing a lot of folks saying they're priestesses and you oh, know they do this and they do a juzu and da, da da and i just don't see it because they don't i mean Here's the other thing. Every Mami Wata person who does the Vodun way, they get incisions. And it's not fun because there's a lot of them. Not as many as like Heviosa or Sakpata, but, you know, they're there. And they're permanent. <laughs> and there are a couple spots in the body. And they're deep. And they're long. So that shit hurt. <laughs> um, it wasn't like it was like <laughs> um it was a very long incision and they're in different shapes and configurations and stuff and i, I don't see it on instagram i see a whole bunch of claiming there's certain things and i just don't see it or i know people who went through you know they said they're vodun Onans, Onan C's, and they have no, they still have a full head of hair, and they still have, you know, no incisions and stuff like that. I'm just like, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, or they don't even have their stuff. Like, you see that? You see? I mean, that's a metal version. I have a wooden version of two. I've had like a total of three, and then there's certain things that we sit on that are ritually made. They're carved. Um. They're fed, there are songs to them, they call, they're based on which is your main vodun, 
you know, things like that, which, you know, people who know, know that people are bullshitting. And other people, the problem is a lot of Americans don't know and a lot of Caribbeans don't know. So they just think, oh, this person's mommy wants to freeze or this money. And it's like, just because you made some beads does not mean that your mommy wants to freeze. And actually your beads are given to you. These are like a smaller version of the beads that I received already. And the beads that I had, I was received the first time in Togo. And then it just, over time, they made more. And then those have even been ritually fed and washed by several different houses. So my beads are my beads. And, you know, then they didn't even break coming over um, from Africa. And they're just glass. But um, whereas I've had other stuff that broke and, you know, that was much larger. So um, a lot of these things in Mami Wata are very special and they do make presence known and you have shrines. They do will walk around your house and they will, um, you know, from personal experience, if, if you, you cannot be a person that disrespects females and be a Mami Wata priest. Um, because they will notice that and they will do something about it, um, either to that person or to you or, you know, get you away from that female that you're disrespecting. Like you cannot be abusive to a woman. You cannot be disrespectful to a woman. Um, that is something that they really don't like. It is really a matriarchal religion. And it's nowadays you see mostly men who are running the Mamiwata houses or they're claiming that they're Mamiwata priests, but it really is matriarchal. And there's always has to be women present. And it's just the way it is. So that's the other thing that's kind of disturbing. Even in my other house, there was a lot of men there and it, it was off to me. And then what I realized is that it's because they weren't, a, they weren't. They were a Vodun house that practiced Mami Wata. They were not a Mami Wata house. So that's the difference. When you see people who practice Mami Wata on the side, um, it is more. You'll see more men there. You'll, it's more masculine. You'll see more people in like Tron and um, working with the Tro and a lot of the um, the spirits from Ghana. And then you'll say there's Mami Wata priests. But when a true Mami Wata priest, you'll see mostly women initiates in the house um and the dancers are mostly women and they might even be headed by a woman so yeah and the ones you know who are mommy lots of priests you think they're also like baba laos and and boom boom freeze and etc etc so yeah um that's a little bit about my story and a little bit about how my journey and um the Mami Watsa stuff was not just from my ancestral point of view, but mainly because of the water spirit thing was a lot of, was a good reason why I went between different traditions because I was in one tradition and it was like a piece of the puzzle that was missing that was still lingering and I couldn't understand it. And it wasn't wh whether I was in Lukumi or, or Haitian voodoo or Palo or even Condomble. It's just, there's stuff if you have spirits from Africa you can you cannot substitute it with something else you have to go to Africa um to take care of it and you have to find the right house to get it to get the ceremonies that you need to get to get the shrines you need to get to maintain that because some of us are even though we're diasporic um we have certain like ancestries and bloodlines linked to certain things and if it's from Africa, it's from Africa. It can't be substituted. It can't be found in Brazil. It can't be found in Haiti. It can't be found in Cuba. It's from Africa. So, you know, some spirits are only in Africa. Like, I have, like I said, I have a Mami Wata spirit that's only in Africa. And I have a Tron, like a Goro Voodoo or a Tro spirit that's from Africa as well. And people tried to tell me that was all types of things. They were trying to tell me it was Shango or Zogu or Zogu Farai or, you know, so many people said it was like a hot issue or that, you know, it was a Petro spirit or that it was even a Dijav, like it was this evil spirit. No, it was not. It was just a hot ass spirit that comes from Ghana. It's a bush spirit. So, you know, bush spirits are violent and hot. 
and that's just the way they are. They like gunpowder and fire and shit. It may look like something really extreme over in the diaspora, but in Africa it's normal. So I guess this video is I wanted to dispel a lot of myths that I see going around um, on both online and Instagram and Facebook about Mami Wata as well as about people who may have spirits that are dealing with Mami Wata and I don't want you to fall into the clutches of the wrong people. If you do have a Mami Wata spirit or you really feel like you have a water spirit and it's not like a lot syringe from Haitian voodoo, then you probably have to go to Africa and you have to be very careful when you go to Africa when everything opens up. Um, Make sure you look at the types of houses, um, look at the ratio of um, male to female initiates, look at the dancers, look at, ask about their lineages, ask about what other things they do, because I've even seen people who do Tron or the fetish spirit stuff, and they wear similar colors, like blue and white, um, and then they'll, or white and red, and they'll try to say that it's Mami Wata, it's not. Um... Mami Wata wears mostly like these three colors. Um, they come in different, sometimes, and also green for like Tohoso and Ajak Pa and stuff. Um, there's very simple things you can notice and people know what they're talking about, especially about the spirits. And then when they're real quick to make it a Luka Mi comparison or Apollo comparison, or they don't even know the basic animals that are sacrificed for each Vodun or what they're symbolized. That's a big clue because if you know where to look or if you're taught right, you know exactly which Vodun is represented by which animal. And they're important because it's not only shown in the artwork and in the shrines, but also required for the shrines. So if they don't know that and they don't have any clue, then they probably don't have any real shit or they haven't been trained even the basics so yeah just be careful i'll talk to you guys later bye